All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Publicly. This is the 20, let's see, 27th day of June in the year of our Lord, 2022. I was looking around. Where's my microphone? It's right there. All right, playing around with things again, and it always causes trouble. Yeah, I ran across something that I wasn't looking for. I mean, I just happened to go over to a Facebook page. I, I do not like Facebook. I end up muting people or shutting them down for 30 days or whatever it is. Because, you know, the people that just want to display their whole life on, on Facebook, there's something wrong with that. There's something going on there that, that is sinful because the world does it. If the world does it, it's sinful. It's not of faith. It's not of God. It comes from the world. There's a difference. And I need to do a video on that again, because this is just a fundamental problem. Uh, but I happened to run across this thing on Facebook. I happened to click on pages, and some local church pages came up. And I know there's a church I hadn't ever visited in the little town of Oakwood, which is just about as close to me as anything else around here, but in time at least. Uh, in fact, I'm actually in the Oakwood School District here, so... It's, it's a nice little town. It's about, uh, oh, five, five miles from here, which is five minutes from here because it's right down the interstate. Uh, it's far enough away from Danville. It isn't like little Detroit. And it's far too expensive for me to buy a place over there because it's one of those places that people move to because they don't want to live in the city and they commute. But uh, I, I think it's a, what you might call a, a typical country community. Um, as all the towns around here were, the small towns were planted by the railroads but uh, and built along the railroads as, to service the, uh, the agricultural communities and make money for the railroads back before there was other alternative forms of transportation. But I ran across this, there was a, a video from a, the Oakwood... United Methodist Church. And if you put it on Facebook, guess what? It's fair game. It's fair game. It's public. You put it on Facebook. I get to comment on this. And th there was something there, and I think, well, I want, I, I've never visited. I was wondering who's preaching. They had the, the le most recent video. They had this dude up there, looked like a younger guy, in a T-shirt preaching. What the heck? You know, I don't dress completely formally you're not going to find me with a, a suit and a tie usually but at least a button-up shirt you know uh, a t-shirt a gaudy colored t-shirt with a gaudy cross hanging on the front now uh, he's probably a, a united methodist pastor at least his male which is unusual among the united methodists these days but they, I saw another thing there, so I thought I'd look at the uh, previous video, and it was a video apparently celebrating their recent vacation Bible school. And I clicked on this, and I wondered, what the heck is this? And they had scenes, you know, pictures, still shots. Somebody put this together to present it to the congregation, apparently, to congratulate themselves on their vacation Bible school. But I want to play the, the opening part here, and I'm going to stop it at a particular place. I, I hate vacation Bible schools. They're, they are never about Jesus. They are not. And they're not about the Bible either. To call this a Bible school is an, is an abomination. But there was a particular thing I want to talk about that's not really about this church and about their vacation Bible school. But I'll get to it. 
It's more important than this. So let's go over here and take a gander at this. You can see Oakwood United United Methodist Church right up there. We had an awesome week of VBS. Okay, so it's a presentation to the church over there, which is a relatively small church, as most churches are around here. Uh, the, the, the biggest United Methodist Church in the area is in Danville. It's called St. James. I mean, that church, you know, like could hold a thousand members, I'm sure. It's a huge stone monument. And it's got like 250 members. You know, this stuff is on the web. How could 250 people possibly, and, and the mainline churches, they're lucky if, if uh, a third of the congregation actually shows up. How could that handful of people, they must have all kinds of, of money stashed away from people that died, you know, and left them money in their wills. How could they maintain that monstrosity? This is, this is not a church like that. Uh, but we're going to take a look at this video here. Hopefully. Let's see, do I get the volume turned up? Yeah. Yeah, I, I went past the point I wanted to stop, so I'm, I'm going to drag it back a little bit here. That This is what I wanted to, to look at. Obviously, this is the kind of crap that they put in. They, uh, companies make millions of dollars producing crap like this for vacation Bible schools because parents don't believe their children should actually be taught the Bible. they got to be, it's got to be like school. It's got to be like kindergarten. I hated vacation Bible school when I was a kid. Hated it. Of course, I hated Sunday school, too. So It wasn't really because of God. It was because of garbage. Garbage like this, although it wasn't so commercialized. Everything has been totally commercialized. Back then, there were some games and some Bible lessons, you know, but now it's, it's this is like the evangelical industrial complex. The, uh, when evangelicalism became popular in this country, when it started to catch on because the world was going nuts and people were looking for some truth, well, American, uh, American commercialism, uh, capitalism took over. It capitalized on God and started marketing everything. When I had my Christian bookstore, I had churches come in. Do you have vacation Bible school material? Yeah, I've got Bibles. <laughs> Why don't you try those? So they wanted a package. You know, these outfits will sell you a church a package that'll cost like a thousand dollars with this art and junk and a theme. I've been, you know, I remember I visited one local. I visit, try to visit all the churches that might believe the Bible, which about half of them in this area. So I remember uh, uh, in this whole county, I remember going down to a, a fundamental Baptist church, independent Baptist church, and they were uh, in the process of having vacation Bible study school. So I walked in this, and the whole sanctuary, the whole uh, ceiling is draped in black plastic with holes punched in it for for to imitate stars. It was a Star Wars theme or a space uh, Star Trek theme. Uh, they, so they build the whole thing around a worldly, earthly scene that has nothing to do with God and teaches the children to mix the world. See, you'd think independent fundamentalist Baptists, because they generally, once upon a time, had a separatist attitude toward the world, that we're not of it, well, now they are of it. Uh, they're just blind to it. Th they don't even see the problems. And it was not my place at the time to tell them about their problems. That's what the Internet's for. 
So here, it says here, God loves you no matter what. I saw that and said, really? Does the Bible say that? No, it doesn't. It says God so loved the world that he did something. He gave his only begotten son so that all those who believe, who are believers in him, should not perish but have everlasting life. That does not say God loves you no matter what. If you do not believe, if you reject the gospel, well, then the wrath of God, the hatred of God abides on you. See, God is love, but that doesn't say who or what God loves. God, that the, the Bible tells us who and what God loves. God does not love those rebels that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He made salvation available for us. But if you reject him and his salvation, you reject Christ, you will not get the love of God. Because God loves righteousness and because he loves his son, you trample the blood of Jesus underfoot by rejecting him, discarding it, think it useless. Well, the Bible tells us it is a frightening thing to fall into the hands of the living God. A terrifying thing. Yeah, you've got he's got a place prepared for you and it's not heaven. Because you hate him and you hate his son who died for you. How much greater hatred can have anybody have than that? So here it says God loves you no matter what. That is a false statement. Of course, this denomination has fully given themselves over to the LGBTQIAZ plus whatever generation. I've got one in my own little uh, neighborhood here with a sign promoting St. James. And on the back side it says, learning to love like Jesus. And there's a, there's a rainbow flag flying on the front porch. So apparently the preachers in places like this don't tell people if you live immor immoral, ungodly lifestyles, you will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. That's what the Bible says. So the New Testament says, but the Apostle Paul wrote, he warned people that think because they believe a fact or, or go to church, they're going to heaven. They're, they've deceived themselves. They've been deceived by the preachers, by the churches, among others, by the devil who runs the places. This is not only about United Methodists, Southern Baptists. Many Many fundamentalist independent Baptists, many Pentecostal churches, many charismatic churches, they're not about Christ. They're about people, flesh. So here, then I saw the quote underneath here. So who can, Harley, Harley. My, my son used to have a dog named Harley. So th this is a, this is a poisonous lizard, by the way. This is a Gila monster. I believe. They, they have a poisonous bite. Yeah, just like this vacation Bible school has got a poisonous bite. Isn't that ironic that they'd put a, a uh, this, this is like a smiling, loving Satan. A Gila monster. God put these bright colors on these things as a warning. Your unfailing love will last forever. Psalm 89, 2. Well, I saw that, and if you're familiar with the Bible, and you hear something that, wait a minute, this doesn't sound right. Of course, the Holy Spirit will prompt you, too. This, doesn't, this isn't right. So I went and looked up Psalm 89, 2, as I often, you know, I see something that don't look right. If pastor says something that ain't right, or it doesn't sound right, I'll go look it up in the Scripture. So, and I was thinking, what? So here, here's what, <clears throat> here's what, <clears throat> what Psalm 89.2 says in the King James. I heard a pastor yesterday say, well, I don't know what the Greek says, but I should have just told him. I was tempted. I just wanted to tell him, Pastor, if you want to know what the Greek says, just read the King James. <laughs> because it is, I think the King James is, is no, it's not entirely, but as faithful as any translation 
out there to the original language. Very faithful. Uh, they apparently thought that what God said is actually important once upon a time. So the, new, the King James, I, I, that's not my first recommendation because the language is archaic. You've got to figure out what, what they meant back in, in 1611 or even earlier because it's, it's even an old version of English for the time. Uh, Psalm 89, Psalm 89, verse 2 says, For I have said, Mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shall, uh, shalt thou establish in the very heavens. The New King James. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Your faithfulness you shall establish in the very heavens. The New American Standard. For I have said, loving kindness. See, they use a little different word there. The, the Hebrews, uh, kassid. Uh, uh, let's see, how do you pronounce that? I don't know. Cusset, cusset. It, it's uh, it's like the New Testament word uh, uh, grace. I think loving kindness is a good translation, but it, it's mercy, goodness, kindness, faithfulness. Uh, those kind of words. Now, what did that children's VBS say? The the Hala monster, the dragon. The desert, the southern, southwestern desert dragon say? Well, it said this. Where is it? Did I, did I drop that? No, oh, there it is. There it is. It says your unfailing love will last forever. Not your mercy. Not your loving kindness. It says your love. Loving kindness is not love. It's a kindness that's based in the character of God. It, it is like, uh, I think, the, the grace, but not exactly. Uh, but it's more mercy. It's almost universally translated that way. So you see down here, ah, until we get to the NIV, that's, which is not the translation that's being used here, by the way. Let me bring the dragon down so I can't see it. See, it's the uh, also the uh, the Greek Old Testament does not say love either. But the uh, let's see, ESV is corrupted. Steadfast love that is not what it means. See, this is a a verse that exposes all the bad translations. So what translation actually is this? It's a new living translation. Your unfailing love will last forever. That is not what the language says. The NLT is a paraphrase, a corrupted non-Bible. NIV says, I will declare that your love stands forever ever stands for it does not say this i hate the niv i hate the nlt even more because it's even more corrupt because they are not faithful to what god has said god warns you shall not change my words you shall not diminish them or add to them now translations are difficult but when you take a word and give it a different meaning, not what it's saying, that the, the word uh, kasset is not love. There's words for that. It's not the word. Just like the Greek word agape is not there either. Uh, if you look at... Uh, Let's say the Latin says mercy. The, the, Vul, the Vulgate, the old Vulgate uh, Latin says mercy. The Reina Valera 1960, Spanish, the, uh, the preferred translation among evangelical uh, Spanish speakers. 
they, they, they keep, these Bible companies keep trying to upgrade that, too. There's nothing wrong with that. Leave it alone. They're only interested in money. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. These publishers that are looking for new translations, or preferably their own translations, so they don't have to pay uh, royalties. And see, you can't, see, if, if you do something, the King James, you can't charge a royalty on it anyway. It doesn't belong to you. Even the New King James, I don't, um, I don't like the fact that it's owned by some private non-Christian entity now called a godless corporation. Uh, para siempre será edificado, edificada misericordia en los cielos mismos afirmarás tu verdad. The heavens affirm your truth. In the heavens your truth is affirmed. See, it's not talking about love. It's talking about his, his. Uh, the closest thing is the idea of grace, uh, too. But it also is a mercy. See, you can show mercy to somebody you don't love. You can show grace to someone you don't love. It has to do with your character, not a relationship. Love is about a relationship. So the, the point is here, oops, I, I went past it there. Uh, actually, the, the, the verses don't always sync up right. That's part of the verse numbers. It's all the same verse. So, so even the ESV is corrupted. New American Standard says loving kindness. That, that is an acceptable translation. Uh, mercy or loving kindness. Again, it, it's, it's in the uh, New Testament, the idea of God's grace uh, and his grace in sending a Savior into this world. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Died for the sins of the whole world, the scripture says. Now, see, the ESV, which I, I detest too, but not as much as the others. It's sort of a degree of de detestation from top down here. ESV, NIV, and NLT. And they only get worse from there. If you're doing something like a... a uh, uh, there's some other paraphrases that are just abominable, especially things that are turned out by charismatics. But some of them, they're, they're just not even close to what God says. Steadfast love will be built up forever. For I have said that, that ESV. That's not what it says. You, they've changed the words. They've changed the meaning of the words. They will be judged. And they're going, and this church, this church, is lying to the children. I'm sure the people in charge there have no clue what they're doing either. So they got a, a poisonous Gila monster named Harvey, or Harley, and your unfailing love, a dragon. That's, that's just, this is, they're, you know, God warns us. God loves you no matter what. That is a lie from Satan. It is a lie from Satan. And a lot of evangelicals and fundamentalists have believed it. It is easy believism, a greasy grace. It is, it is a grace you bestow on yourself. It is, it is, I'm going to heaven because I believed a fact. It's not about relationship to God. It's not about being born again. They don't even understand what that is. It's the idea, I, I believed a fact that Jesus died for my sin, or... You know, because somebody told me that. But, oh, okay, I'll believe that. Especially if you promise I'm going to heaven, if I believe that fact. To believe in Christ is not to say 
the same as believing something about Christ. One is about relationship, the other is just head knowledge. The dragon, the southwestern American dragon, says your unfailing love will last forever. That is not God's word, and people that present it as God's word are guilty. Preachers especially who use the NLT or the NIV or at times even the ESV and they are, are will not exercise due diligence to even a, a compare it to a reliable translation like the King James or New King James or, or even the New American Standard are guilty of negligence. You know what happens if a death results from negligence behavior? That's manslaughter. What happens when a soul goes to hell because of your negligence? What happens if you're pre teaching children lies? Glorifying Satan here. The dragon. A toxic, poisonous lizard. What is wrong with you people? Well, you're not of God. You don't belong. You're not children of God. God loves you no matter what. Somebody tells you that, you're hearing the voice of Satan. Oakwood United Methodist Church, the people there are going to answer to God. But this is done everywhere. This is the garbage that Christian publishing houses spew out in the name of profit. They will answer to God. The Bible publishers that, like Tyndale, and uh, who did the ESV? I don't know. They will answer to God for changing his word. If you think the ESV, oh, that was really popular with the Calvinists. You think the ESV is a good translation? You're nuts. You don't care about God's word. Because I can't read a chapter in the ESV without being offended by it, by their, their looseness. I can't even go through a chapter. I try. I try. Because people like it. Some people like it. But the NLT, not a chance, because it's not even close. The NIV is not quite so gushy, but it is mushy. But it's, it's almost. And all these things are getting worse and worse and worse and conforming themselves to the culture. The Christian Standard Bible put out by the Southern Baptists is trash. It is a Southern Baptist version of the NIV. It's trash. It is not what God said. Not close. Just like this so-called vacation Bible school material, probably pull, pulled out by a Methodist, United Methodist Publishing House, with a dragon for a mascot. A poisonous dragon. What else would you call a heel monster? A dragon is a lizard, right? <laughs> that kills people. So is a heel monster. Oh, by the way, the, the word dragon and the word snake, serpent, in the Bible is really the same word. So when they talk about the, the, the serpent in the garden in the book of Revelation, it talks about the ancient dragon, the serpent. It's... it's it's the, the meaning of dragon or serpent is, you know, it, it's con both contained. So this, this is awful. I just stumbled across this. I just got to say something about it. It doesn't matter. It, see, any, the, the, the whole idea of vacation Bible school... It's about entertaining the kids. 
pleasing the kids, and then manipulating the kids, and then trying to get them to say a prayer or something. That's evil. If it's vacation Bible school, then it has to be about the Bible. The NLT is not the Bible. The NIV is not the Bible. Remember when I was young, they came out with that good news for modern man. It even had little cartoons in it. But it's not the Bible. Sometimes they try to get the idea. Well, that is not good enough for God. There's nothing wrong with God's word. You don't need to mess with it. You need to be faithful to what God said. Faithfully present what God said. Every preacher out there, if you're up there giving your own message, you need to get on your knees and repent. Yikes. So, if you got an NLT, there's an appropriate place for it. It's called the trash can. And the NIV. And I would discourage people from using the ESV. There are better translations. Just because your favorite teacher uses it. If you got your favorite teacher putting out his own version of the Bible, you better flee from that abomination, too. Like John MacArthur out there with the Legacy Bible. It's his legacy. How dare a person take God's word and alter it and put his name on it? We don't need John MacArthur's legacy. We don't need John MacArthur. We need Jesus Christ. And unless the churches get back to Christ and preaching Christ and him crucified, they will find themselves on the wrong side of the judgment of Jesus Christ. Well, I think I've said my piece this morning. This is atrocious. God save these children from these churches. They're abominations. They are, they are a stench in the nose of God. Judgment is here. There's a sign in front of all these churches, and the word on that sign is Ichabod. The glory has departed. 